Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here, and in today's video we are going to be thinking about a beginner's guide to hobby. Now let's get some provisos out of the way first. I actually don't like hobby. So any hobby videos you ever see on my channel are going to be focused very strictly on how to cut corners, how to get results without putting in effort, etc, etc. So I definitely have my own biases in this video, but I'm going to try and make it nice and clear for you when I'm saying, hey, this is really good, but if that's not your style of painting and hobby, then it's actually going to be really bad for you. Super quick overview for what this video is going to be, guys. We're going to talk about the required tools, paint brands and which to buy, spray paints, the correct way to paint your model, and then finally we're going to do a speed painting guide because that's what I really know. There are so many guides out there teaching you how to be the best painter you can possibly be, but I'm here to teach you how to be the fastest painter you can possibly be. So I'm just going to tell you the tools that you need to begin hobby. Absolutely key, you need to have cutters, you need to have a scalpel, you're going to need paints, you're going to need glue, and if you're using Citadel miniatures, I would recommend you need both plastic, cement glue, and super glue. If you're on a really tight budget, then super glue works on all types of miniatures, whereas plastic glue only works on plastic miniatures, so you'd go for the super glue above the plastic glue there. So as we can see, Games Workshop do clippers, they do brushes, they do paints, they do, they do random little tools, they do paint handles, they do the glues. If you don't care and you just want to go with what's easily available in your local Games Workshop, Everything they do is decent. Uh, their brushes are acceptable these days, I've been led to understand. I personally use their cutters, I think the cutters are really good. And you know what, the mold line remover, although it might look a bit silly, is a really useful tool in certain situations. Their plastic glue and their super glue is also fine. And I would even go as far as to say that the painting handles are actually really useful. However, as you may be well aware from the prices of Games Workshop, everything they sell is a premium product. So if you want to get into this as a budget kind of thing, and you know, this is a beginner series, so I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to ask for, you're going to go over to Amazon and you're going to type in modeling kit, or if you want hobby kit or Gundam kit, anything like that, and you're going to get a whole bunch of items you can look at, and they all have crazy things on them. There's so many like heads and files and uh, rulers and you might be asking why do I need that? Screwdrivers, that's a bit weird. Really, all you need from here, in my opinion, are the clippers, the scalpel, and if you really want the files, but I personally don't use files, that's too much work. And I find that I can clean my miniatures with just a scalpel. So this here is £30, which over on Games Workshop would just get you clippers and a mould line tool. But if we scout around a bit and we go with what I said of only really needing clippers and a scalpel, I would recommend this one right here. It's below £10. You can't go wrong. For proof of this, I would say look at myself. I have used the same scalpel and scalpel blade for 10 years. I have not changed my scalpel blade. It is blunt. That's good because that means I probably will cut myself less. You do not need premium quality. Go for this. This is more than you will ever need. Now I'm going to do a very quick side note on hand drills. If you're thinking of magnetizing any of your models, you're going to be wanting a little hand drill, something like this right here. Uh, it's just a little hand tool that you can slot in all sorts of different sized drill bits. You're probably only going to be looking at drill sizes between 1 and 2 mil. You don't really need anything else. Going down to half a mil, that's too small of a magnet, you're not going to be able to hold anything. Going up to 3 mil is fine. To cover all of your bases, 1 mil, 2 mil, 3 mil, 4 mil would cover everything you'd ever want to put onto a miniature. Now that's great if you're working in plastic or resin. If you ever want to work with a metal model and look at magnetizing that, you are going to need something with a bit more power behind it, at which point you're going to have to be looking at something with a motor. What you're probably going to want to do there is find the cheapest Dremel-like tool you can find, a mini drill, and then buy some drill bits and hope that they fit. It's a lot more work, but it's the only real way of magnetizing metal models. 
Now when we go over to glues, of course Games Workshop does uh, perfectly serviceable glue, they have a nice thin nozzle on them. If that's what you're into, this is a great place to start. However, I personally like to apply my glue with brush. This is some random glue that I found on Amazon, it's worked brilliantly for me for a long time now. And it also has a nice wide mouth if you ever want to do a bit of pouring of it to create some sort of gap filler material. What's that? Gaps in your models? Yes, that's a thing. Don't worry, I've linked to one of my gap filling videos in the description and the top comment. If you are putting together your models and you're finding lots of gaps between joins, you can fix that with this glue very easily. Likewise, super glue can also be applied with a brush. I don't know what it is, guys. I just like applying things with brushes. Who knows? I would recommend this Gorilla Glue right here. I've used it a lot. It's really good. Now, if you do need to get into very tight areas, the brush isn't so great and you'd need to buy something with a thin tip applicator of some sort, but I've rarely had to do that. So you've just picked up your clippers and your scalpel and you want to start painting a miniature, well of course you need to buy paint. There are so many brands out there today that it's hard for any one person to truly say this is the best brand and I'm going to give you a little hint right now, there is no best brand. It's really down to what you want to achieve as a painter. Games Workshop paints are really good, they're very high pigment, there's nothing wrong with them. They're very thick, you're going to have to mix them with water to get the best of results, but that's not the worst thing in the world. As we can see, Games Workshop does a whole bunch of beginner kits now for you to get a few different colours that you want. Uh, you can't go wrong with this, if, if you want to keep it simple, stick to GW, any sort of essentials kit is great by them. I'm going to quickly look at a few other paint brands and just give you my thoughts on them. When it comes to Army Painter, I don't like their paints, they've never had good results for me. There you go. With that said, I love their spray paints. It allows you to get a base colour down on the model super quickly and then just add a few highlights and you're done. So with Army Painter, regular paints, don't bother. Spray paints, definitely. We then come into a little bit of a middle of the road kind of paints, by which I mean they're not full on artist quality paints. Some of the colours are better than Games Workshop colours. I personally haven't used Vallejo, Reaper or anything else like that that I'm not specifically calling out in this video. Some people will swear by them, some people hate them. It's just the way they are. You can't really go wrong though, they are not bad paints. They all seem to have good pigment coverage and they're all completely serviceable. If you see some Reaper or some Game Colour, some Vallejo for sale, pick some up. Or if you see they have a really nice tone that you want to have on all of your models, don't worry, these are good paints, you can buy them. I'm going to quickly talk about Scale 75. These are the artist quality paints. These are, if you will, the best of the best. They are the best paints you can pick up. I don't use them, and uh, let me tell you why. I like to get models painted quickly, I don't have any artistry in me, I'm paint by numbers, I don't do anything fancy. I have however seen these paints and I can tell you they are really thick. Now obviously, if you're trying to create a really vibrant colour, that's great. Pick these up, you will have to water it down, you will have to use a wet palette every time you do anything with them. For me, if I can't use it straight from the pot, it's too much hassle. So if you want to go top of the line, definitely look at scale 75. If you want to get miniatures painted quickly and on the table, maybe think about something else. On the very few miniatures that I do actually want to paint well, I look to P3, partly because I decided to buy all of their paints uh, like six years ago, maybe seven years ago, and they are all still completely perfectly fine to use despite having just sat in a container for so long. They have lots of pigment in them, so they give really vibrant hues and colours to your models. They also have a lot of interesting shades, They've got lots of great flesh colours, lots of really bright blues that I love, and quite a few yellows as well. The reason I consider these a step up from Games Workshop is because with these models, again painting at my, my standard, not painting at super high quality artist standard, is that these are much thinner than Games Workshop paints. Which means you don't have to thin them as much, you can just kind of lick the tip of your brush and then you're good to go straight from the pot. Whereas typically with GW you do still need to water them down so that you get a good consistency. But conversely that almost always means you're going to have to put two layers on. Now it will look better if you're doing two layers, but it's a lot more effort. So if you want to kind of go a, a step up from GW but not all the way to artist level, 
I'd recommend P3. I've used them, I like them, that's what they are. Okay, now let's talk about brushes. Once again, Games Workshop, they do brushes. It used to be, you know, a decade ago, that Games Workshop brushes were considered to be the worst in the industry, and it was just mind-boggling. Nobody knew why they did it so terribly. I haven't used any of their new line of brushes. I hear they're okay. If you want to go and buy them, go for it. They're a little bit expensive for what you get, but that's that's Games Workshop in a nutshell. So Now, whilst I do not recommend Army Painters paints, I love their brushes. I've gotten great stuff done with their basic army painter brush set. You get a really tiny brush that's great for you know pupils, eyes, etc. Uh, you get a regiment brush to do everything with and you get a, li a little dry brush. There are also lots of third-party brushes you can look into, makeup brushes, uh, Kalinsky brushes. I'm not going to go over them all. There are so many out there. There are some that are truly the best and everyone agrees and then there are uh, you know the ones that everybody else is going to use which are pretty okay. I don't really know what's what when it comes to brushes. I know that I like my army painter brushes, that's all I can really say. But chances are that your local hobby store, not GW in this time, I mean, you know, Hobby Lobby or Hobbycraft or whatever your local hobby store is in your country, are gonna sell brushes pretty similar to this. Feel free to pick them up. They will probably suffice for all that you need to do as a beginning painter. Okay, now before you actually get to painting your model, the first thing you have to do is give it an undercoat. Most people are going to want to do this with a rattle can spray. Games Workshop does great rattle can sprays, you can't go wrong with any of them. The only negative is that they tend to be a little bit expensive, but again, that's Games Workshop for you. I suppose the only guidance I would give is perhaps don't buy their Munitorum varnish. I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure there's no problem with it, however, Whenever I hear about someone complaining about varnishing their models, it's always when they've used the Munitorum varnish. But I personally have never had any issues with Army Painter matte varnish, so I'd recommend that, just because I've had personally good experience with it. Now, Games Workshop doesn't have the widest selection of undercoating sprays, so if you need something else, I'd recommend Army Painter sprays. I think they're really good, I've used them myself, not had any issues. The only thing I will point out is that if you want a really good coverage, for example with their Demonic Yellow, which is a colour I've used many times, it doesn't have as much pigment in it as you might hope. So what you would need to do is actually undercoat the model first with black or white, and then go over the top of that with the Demonic Yellow, at which point it will stick to the model no problems at all. And now a very brief word before we get to the speed painting guide on how to paint your models correctly. By which I mean from a rules perspective. One of the most common questions I hear, do I need to paint my models in this way for them to have these rules? For example, if you want to run the Ultramarines rule for a sub-faction, do you have to paint your models as Ultramarines? The simple answer is no. You never have to do that. Nowhere in any of the rules for any pack, uh, whether it's competitive or whether it's just from the core books, have I ever seen it say, your models must be painted X for them to have Y rules. That simply doesn't exist, so please paint your models however you want. If you're really worried that you want to be able to use Blood Angels rules one day and Ultramarines the next and Space Wolves the next, then I recommend just painting them as a custom chapter, so just go with your own colour scheme. And I would strongly recommend that if you do decide to paint them blue and use Ultramarines iconography, but then decide to run them as Blood Angels, and if anyone genuinely has a problem with that, do not play with them. They are not somebody worth playing against. This message sponsored by Glass Half Dead, who doesn't like painting models. Okay, and I hope this has helped. Let's get into a speed painting guide. When it comes to speed painting, contrast paints are truly your best friend, and they are basically the only paints I use anymore. The great thing about contrast paints is that you can get a model tabletop ready with minimal fuss, but if you then want to go ahead and apply traditional painting techniques at a later date, you can do that with no ill effects. The new range of contrast paint sprays from Games Workshop are fantastic, and I fully endorse all of them, but I personally like Wraithbone the best. The trick to speed painting is to decide on a light neutral wash, that's a thin paint that will seep into the cracks, that will act as the main colour for the model and then apply it. 
We then want to decide on two more colours. One will be the primary and one will be the secondary. For me, I've gone with blue for the energy and magic of this model, and then dark green which will be for the armour. You also want to pick a metallic, typically gold or silver. Here I've gone with a bog standard silver lead belcher. What's happened here is your first coat of a light wash has given you all of the shadows to make your miniature look alive and painted, and then the other colours are there to draw the eye to individual parts of the model, making the paint job look more detailed than it really is. The tan colour of my model is clearly the majority, but because it's neutral and doesn't draw the eye, instead the eye is drawn to the big shoulder pads and then the little touches of blue which both really stand out against the neutral majority. The other key to speed painting is basing the model. Games Workshop does a series of basing texture paints that are all great and I've used almost all of them at one point or another. With this model, I used a white Vallejo basing paste just because it's cheaper and because it's white you can make it any colour you want. The base should be a different colour of the model and typically a dark colour. You want it to frame the model for you. To be present but not divert attention. Greys and browns are typical for this. You can add all manner of grass and rubble but for this I've kept it very basic mainly because I'm in quarantine and I don't have any of the stuff to add. And there you have it. A very quick guide to speed painting a model. All of the models you see floating around you on the screen here have been painted the same way as I've just described and I think you'll agree that for an absolutely minimal amount of work they came out looking pretty damn good. Okay everybody I hope you've enjoyed the hobby aspect that I've done for you here today for Kill Team Beginners. Of course everything you've seen here applies to everything else not just Kill Team, it applies to Big 40k, Age of Sigmar, Infinity, Warcaster. This is literally just a generic hobby video. I've done a few others on this channel. The main ones I'd point you towards are the marble base tutorial I did, which I think came out very well for how little effort you have to put in. And then also, as I mentioned earlier, the gap filling tutorial I did. As always guys, if you could leave a like and a subscribe and a comment, that would really help out my channel. And that means I can make more Kill Team videos, which I think that's what we all want, especially if you've stayed right till the end of the video. So until then, I hope you've had a good day and I hope you continue to have a good day. Goodbye.